Okay, I'm just going to say it, and this is something I've been guilty of, but I think a lot of people who do home labs install Proxmox by default. And don't get me wrong, it is a brilliant operating system and it's pretty close to perfect, especially for the home lab community. But sometimes it's just not what you need. Because the thing is, if your server just does the basics like DNS, such as Pi-hole or Technitium, so a little bit of tail scale, it also does some basic monitoring with uptime Kuma and so on, you actually need Proxmox as an OS. See, because for stuff like that, I actually think Fedora 4 43, the server edition in particular is so, so much better. And because it has one incredible feature called cockpit. See, today's video is pretty much an experiment where I'm trying to find out whether Fedora OS is good enough to run my complete home lab. Now, ever since actually making a video about my Dell 5810, the 14 core, 28 thread monster CPU and so on, I've actually turned it off in the last week because I just find myself not using it. And I've actually found myself switching over to the Tenzig PC that I've made a video not long ago. I've got link to both of those videos down in the description below the like button. Now, Proxmox is obviously there for a reason. It is really good. There's loads of documentation. There are loads of videos about it. So it's really, really easy to learn. But I tend to get bored a little bit in my home lab. And therefore, this is why I wanted to try out Fedora OS. It's almost a little bit of a sleeper pick when it comes to your home lab environment because you don't really see that many videos about it and you don't hear many people talk about it. And the one thing I want to show you is how good Cockpit actually is and why I think it's an incredible feature. Now, it's not Fedora OS exclusive. You can just go ahead and install Cockpit on pretty much any Linux distro. They've got a whole guide on their website, which I'll link down below if you're interested in finding out more. But I genuinely think it ties in really, really nicely with Fedora OS. So let's switch over to my PC and let me show you exactly what it looks like. So in order to access Cockpit, you need to use port 9090. That's the default port for Cockpit. And then you'll get presented with this overview here. Now, obviously, you're going to have to sign in. And when you sign in, it might ask you for administrative access. But here's essentially where you can manage most of your features. Features. So on the overview section, you can reboot, you can shut down the system. You also can change the dark mode. So you can have a dark light, SSH keys, and so on. Now you also get a bunch of info on here. So you get the config, you get the performance profile and things like that. So stuff that you'd normally have to hunt around in the terminal. This is kind of why I absolutely love it. You can see how much memory I'm using, how much CPU usage I've got, and then I can obviously see a history of it all. So if I want to dig a little bit deeper, see what kind of is taking up storage and so on. Then we have storage. And again, storage gives you just a much more in-depth overview of your storage, as the name implies. So you can see the drives that are connected. You can see how much data has been used. So you can see if Fedora is using 16 gig, for example, the file system, EFI boot, and so on. So all of these things are visible here. And you can scroll down. You can obviously get a storage log as well. Networking, as the name implies, shows your IP addresses, shows you what's being used, shows you what's happening. You can also enable firewall rules, add a VPN, bridges, VLANs, all this sort of stuff. And all of this can be managed from here. And again, here is where I can see my tail scale IP. So if I forget the tail scale IP, this is where I can get it. Now, virtual machines is something I have added myself. And you can install, I think it's it's called libvertd. And you can go ahead and configure virtual machines. Now, I have absolutely no power on this thing in order to create them. But I can import them or I can also create the VMs here. And it just walks you through. Now, this PC is very slow, but you can obviously download an OS and you can just go ahead and configure it. Now, I haven't played around with this because for me, this is just not necessary. Now, the other thing with virtual machines is you can create storage pools. So you can also go ahead and do that. So you can make them iSCSI, network file systems, and all this sort of stuff. So if you've already got existing storage, this is where you can potentially add it. But again, I haven't really messed around with this. Now, here is your account. Again, pretty self-explanatory. You create your accounts. Services section, this is what I really, really like because a lot of the times I struggle with remembering what the service is called, how to start it, how to get it up and running, SSH being one of them, as well as many, many others. Whereas here you can literally see every single thing. So there we've got cockpit, for example, so I can click into it and it gives me a little bit more info. You can see the status here. So it's running. It tells you when it kind of started running. But if I go down a little bit deeper, so I've got Docker here and on Docker, I can actually turn it off and on. So there we go. When I hover, hover over it, it says stop and disable. It tells me to that it starts automatically. It tells me the status that it's running. And then you can also see the logs. So again, this is something that's really, really easy to manage your whole Fedora OS. And that's why I think it's a sleeper OS, because in my opinion, this is just absolutely brilliant. Now, under tools, 
we get applications. And this gives you a bunch of applications that are kind of pre-configured, but not yet installed or potentially even installed. So there we go, we've got machines. So if I didn't want virtual machines to be running, I could just turn this off here. Now, Podman is what Fedora uses for managing Docker containers. So if I wasn't using Docker and I wasn't so familiar with Docker, um, I could enable Podman here by literally just clicking install and it'll go ahead and configure everything for me. Because each OS sometimes has its own kind of configuration way and path and so on, the way it needs to be configured. Now, I've noticed this within, when installing Docker on Fedora. There's just a slightly different way rather than just sudo DNF install for uh, Docker. So I can just manage it from here and it does everything for me. And it takes kind of the difficulty of making sure everything's configured out of it. Again, you can see everything here, files, I can use all this. Now, file browser, I've already touched on this in my previous video, but I can essentially upload from my host PC. So my Windows machine here, I can upload files. So if I wanted to upload, I don't know, this net user data, it's not allowed me to do it. But yeah, if I wanted to upload anything like that, for example, this readme here, I can just click upload and it's, there we go, straight away it's there. I do not need to mess around with SSH. Everything is there. I can go ahead and delete and uh, do everything I need to do straight from this user interface. Now, SE Linux, I don't mess around with too much, but software updates, again, instead of typing sudo DNF update, sudo DNF uh, upgrade and all this sort of stuff, I literally just click refresh. It's going to go ahead and refresh all the latest packages, make sure that they're all up to date. And if not, it will show me which ones aren't up to date. It will go ahead and install it. But I have it actually configured to automatically set the uh, update all the packages, which I want to show you in a second once this kind of uh, this loading screen disappears. There we go. So on the right hand side, I've got settings and then I've got automatic updates. So it will every single day at two o'clock in the morning, it will update everything for me. And then it will just go ahead and restart the machine every single day for me. There we go. We can see that when, um, when every single day at 2 a.m. the host will reboot. So it saves me just having to manually do it. It's essentially just a cron job. And then finally, this is the bit that I absolutely love. I have a terminal here. So when I go to my port 9090, I am in my terminal. Now I've got fish as the default terminal. So we can see that here. And if I type in Neo fetch, and I believe I've got it installed. No, nope, might be fast fetch. There we go. I have fast fetch installed. And there we go. We can see it. We are on Fedora. We're using 1.96 gig and all this sort of stuff. So absolutely love the fact that I've got a terminal in here because sometimes SSH might be disabled or it's not enabled or something's happened. Whereas here I can just click into it and go straight into it and do what it is I need to do. I can do an LS and all those types of things are straight away visible on here. And again, absolutely makes my life so much easier managing this machine and this server. And this is why I think Fedora is something that should be on your radar when you are considering a home lab with kind of minimal effort. So if you just want Docker up and running, you're not going to be running any VMs, anything like that. I genuinely, genuinely think you should consider, consider Fedora just because of cockpit that's built in. Again, it's not exclusive to Fedora, by all means it's not, but I have been nothing but impressed with Fedora Server Edition so far, and it's just made managing my Docker images and just my home lab so much easier. I'm still planning on using Proxmox. I'm still planning on all of that sort of stuff, but that is going to be for dedicated machines. I think from now on, unless anything changes, it will be Fedora that I'm going to be spinning up every single time. So let me know what you think of Fedora, because I'm genuinely curious, because to me, again, this is absolutely brilliant, but I want to know what you would do with this, and I want to know what you would install, and is there anything that I'm missing? Because I've already played around with Nixo and NixOS was okay. I haven't had the most success with it, but that's maybe because I just don't get it. But I have a video that I'll link down below where I go over NixOS because I just, I don't know, I just struggled with it. But yeah, let me know what you think of Fedora. Let me know what you would configure and how you would have this up and running.